There's only one out of all of the stages of the genocide that we have not hit yet. Like they're it's already the denying denial it. Denial one. Oh, that, I guess are, they are already denying yeah, it. Yeah, I mean they're doing everything short of actually outwardly putting trans people in camps. Mm -hmm. Like we are in the midst of a genocide, guys. And if you don't believe that we are, I don't know what to tell you. Well, welcome everybody. How are you guys doing? I think that daylight savings time is a siege tactic. It's something. It's we not. To, we just need to stay on it. Yeah. yeah. Stay on summertime. That seems mm -hmm. to be. Everybody's always so mopey about how it gets dark earlier in the winter. But the politicians just keep talking about keeping us on standard time because, of course, if they're going to do anything right, they're going to fuck it up. You know. Yeah. It's true. Oh, sorry. Um, is there censorship or uh, what? Oh, no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't okay. matter. Whatever you're comfortable saying is fine for the broadcast. Okay, I have a potty mouse. So. Oh, it's well, so do I. So it's all good. We'll we'll get okay. along just fine. <laughs> um, I was on N NPR about a month ago, and I had to like keep myself from you know going off into my tirades. So politics would have been oh. pretty hard for you then. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> oh, I you're really. I would have been an asshole, but yeah, I'm chaotic neutral. It would have been a, it would have been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Speaking of. Why don't we get into it? So what we're here to discuss today, Vanessa Joy, um, I am joined with Luxander and we are doing a little bit of an interview on you today uh, because of some recent shenanigans that went down in what was the county? Stark County. Is that correct? Stark County. Stark yeah. County. That's right. You made, uh, I believe, national headlines, didn't you? International. International. Yeah. Yeah. I made it all the way into Canada and I think England. So that's crazy. And but Poland, too. So it's weird. That's insane. Uh, w would you like to tell us a little bit about why you made national headlines? Well, I was running for office in a very red district. Um, and I going around collecting my signatures uh, without knowing about this really obscure law in Ohio, where if you don't put, if you've changed your name in the past five years and you don't put that name on the, um, on the signature sheets, the, the petitions, sorry, that's that's the word I was looking for. Um, then you are disqualified from office. Um, and that information was nowhere in any of the candidate handbooks. There's not even a spot on the petitions to list a former name. So um, pretty much nobody in Ohio knows about the law. Uh, other boards of election don't know about it. The Ohio Democratic Party didn't know about it. it sounds like even up until now, the Secretary of State didn't really know about it that much. So. Um, but I happen to be in a county where, um, someone at the board of elections happened to know about the law and it flagged my petitions. So even though I did have enough signatures to get on the ballot, they disqualified me and gave me no ability to, um, rectify it due to this gotcha law. Um, and even the Democrats, because uh, the boards of election have two Republicans and two Democrats. And uh, the Democrats didn't even give me a chance. Turns out one of them is the chairman of the Stark County uh, Democratic Party. And I've heard through the grapevine that he didn't want me running in the first place. So um, I think he found a way to uh, keep me off. Apparently, they only like backing candidates that have already been involved with the Stark County Democratic Party. But I'm new to the area, and I only decided to run out of necessity because the trans community is trying to be eradicated in Ohio. So, yeah, it was fun. Is it true that there that that ended up being the situation where you were the only Democrat who was even trying to run in that particular district? So the Republican ended up running unopposed. Yeah, um, a writing candidate has actually stepped in. His name is Dorimus Redvine. Um, so I'm throwing my support behind him. But yeah, uh, it was, but that's only if he gets his 50 signatures uh, on on the 19th. Otherwise, it's going to stay a red district. So, which is quite annoying, honestly. That they would rather have no Democrat running than have you running is like, it's pretty egregious. And weren't there other trans people running mm -hmm. in Ohio? Not the same county, I assume. No. Okay. Um, there are two other trans women running for office in Ohio that they also recently changed their names, but their boards of election said that they could stay on the ballot because they clearly weren't trying to deceive the voters at all. Now, should they get 
elected, that's going to cause an issue. Um, they're, they both have lawyers working on it, but the the law states that if you are caught with this, with having changed your name, you have to be removed from office immediately and pay back all of your uh, salary that you've made. So um, it's pretty major to the point where I'm trying to get people to uh, look into current elected officials, especially Republicans who have changed their names and s to see if they have, um, if they listed their former names on the petitions. And if not, we might be able to get a bunch of Republicans out of office. Even the governor, Mike DeWine, his uh, original name isn't Mike. And he's been in office forever, but who knows what he put on the petitions back when he ran. The law's been around since 1850s. So um, wow. it's an old law. But yeah, it's been a... there. So yeah, there's the two trans women running. There's also a trans man, um, but he's running under his dead name because he hasn't legally changed his name yet. So... And uh, just real quick before we continue, I should have done this at the beginning. My name is Alec Gunter. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, and then if you two would like to share your name and pronouns real quick. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, I'm Lexander. I've been on YouTube for a while and I use they or it pronouns primarily. I'm here just as like, uh, I guess I'm the trans expert interviewer here. Um, I, I know Alec and I both cover these things frequently. Um, but yeah, it's good to be here to actually have the conversation you know, we, I've covered it on my show, What Happened to You, and like, personally, I think it's pretty egregious. But anyway, go ahead, Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. Uh, I go online by Vanessa Stradial, and um, I have a whole 345 YouTube subscribers. So, yeah, um, I run a, po a trans a podcast. Well, it used to be trans podcast. We're actually focusing more on just on humanity in general um, called Transcending Humanity. And that has a whole hundred fifty subscribers, so I am winning at the internet with 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 my with my reach. So yeah, but yeah, I am a forty two year old trans woman living in Ohio, and it sucks. Yeah, it's unfortunately not looking too good in Ohio right now for trans people. But um, this story uh, has has it helped at all with your YouTube channel? I'm just curious. Um, yeah, actually, a, t a tiny bit. I would say it okay. gained maybe 50 uh, subscribers. 50? Well, you got to bump those numbers up. Guys, the... <laughs> uh uh, Vanessa Dial's uh, uh, channel is in the title of the video right now, and I'll also put a link in the description of the YouTube video. So get in there right now if you haven't already. Go subscribe. Uh, from what I can tell so far, Vanessa is a, a you know very nice person who deserves way more uh, attention than she's currently getting. So uh, to continue, I just want to point out that the only reason that I even know about uh, Vanessa Dial here is because of Luxander, my good friend. Vanestradial. Vanestradial. I am so sorry. Vanestradial. And estradiol. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it's it. like the medication. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Estradiol is the um, estrogen that we inject ourselves with. Gotcha. And I just added on Vanessa because I'm Vanessa. You're going to think I'm silly because I've always pronounced it uh, 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 estradiol. <laughs> so I, I think don't know. there's multiple ways of doing it, honestly. Okay, but your name is estradiol. Got it. Or venestradiol. Yeah. Venestradiol. Venestradiol. I will yeah. try. I will do my best. <laughs> I'm not the best at names. Just call me Vanessa. <laughs> okay, Vanessa. That works. Um, so, Alexander, um, you're the only reason that I even know about Vanessa, so thank you very much for that, um, even though I'm the one living in Ohio. Um, yeah. So I kind of wanted... Pay attention. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I promise. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for that real quick. And uh, to continue with the conversation, so um, it sounds like it was mainly the, the Democrats who were standing in your way. Is that correct or? Um, well, it, it in the county, I mean, the Democrats could have stood up for me, but um, they decided not to. So, but okay. uh, like one of Bobby Arnold, um, one of the other candidates, the head of her board of elections is a Republican. And he's the one that said that she can stay on the ballot because she wasn't trying to deceive anybody. So I have a feeling there's a bunch of shenanigans going on in the background that I'd never be able to prove, but you know, you know, it's going on. So Love that democratic party. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It is, it is quite unfortunate for They're sure. The lesser of evils. Um, well, Vanessa, I wanted to know a little bit about you personally. So do you mind just uh, sharing a little bit about like your background and how you got into politics and maybe a little bit about like your, you know, your, your, 
uh, journey through being trans? Because uh, I know everybody's different, so I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say about it. So all the things then. Um, all the things. Yeah. Um, I didn't come out till I was 40. I've known I was trans since I was about five, but living in a Christian conservative family and then running that Christian conservative family's business up until 2019, I didn't really have much of an opportunity until my dad quite literally walked in front of a train and it didn't have to worry about his abuse anymore. So um, I was able to come out after that. If I would have done it beforehand, he probably would have killed me. So, um, Jeez. Yeah. Or, but uh, so I, I never really thought about getting into politics until this past October. I went to the Trans Trans Ohio Symposium, and um, just talking to people there, I'm like, you know what? We need some sort of change here. So I mean, most of the most of the bills coming out against trans people in Ohio or coming from the Ohio House. So I'm like, I'm gonna run for the Ohio House. People are like, well, you should just run for a school board or something like that. And while those elections are very important, don't get me wrong, I needed to go to a, a step up in order to actually make change right away, um, rather than kind of work my way up the line. So school board elections are arguably the most important elections to vote in, but um, I needed to go where I was needed, so. But I'm a mother. I hate being a parent, um, which is always interesting. I believe I'm autistic and trying to get screened for that, which is not easy. Um, I'm a gamer. I have over 6,000 hours logged in Civilization VI. Uh, my YouTube channel actually was originally a Civ VI, uh, pretty much a Civ VI channel. Um, and Love Baldur's Gate 3, just be Divinity, or Divinity Origins in 2 original sin too and i'm not very good i play everything on like story mode and basic mode but you know at least i'm pretty so there you go hey there's nothing wrong with playing on story or basic mode seriously i i, I just try to be i i don't play games for distress i play it just for relax like civ 6 i play on dd but i which which i with six thousand hours logged i should be playing on dd so but yeah Okay. So it's just a I'm normal person. I'm trying to convince myself like. that I can switch Hades off. I've been trying to beat Hades. Like I cannot beat the final guy. And uh, I'm trying to convince myself that it's okay for me to switch it to God mode. But I'm just like, I just want to beat the goddamn game. Uh, it's so hard to let yourself yeah. play on easy mode sometimes. Like everything. Absolutely. But you're right. Like I don't want to be stressed when I'm playing games. I'm trying to mm -hmm. relax. Like I'm trying to enjoy the story and everything. And it's like, I just get frustrated because I'm like, oh, I'm about to die again. Great. Yeah, reset, reset once again. <laughs> that like I got to the very end because I was playing Divinity Two on um on like the standard mode, but I got to the final boss and the final boss of that game is like the difficulty level like spikes way over any anything else. So I had to set it to story mode because I wanted to finish the game. So. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Um, so you've you've talked a bit about like your personal life and your interests. So I'm curious, how likely is it that you would have gotten into politics had you not been trans? Probably zero percent. I didn't even start voting until I turned forty, until I came out really. So I was just kind of living your cishet white guy days through life. So um, it seems to be kind of a common theme in the trans community too. But um, yeah, I just didn't care because it was one. Of, you know, the average person, if it doesn't affect us, we don't really care that much until we find find a reason to care. And there's so many different issues that, you know, we gloss over um, because we only have so much brain power to do it. So trans rights were never on my radar, really, um, until this. And then I wasn't even going to run on trans rights, though, because that would not be popular in my district. I was going to run on providing universal child care in Ohio. So um, because that is needed. And I think that would get some Republicans, moderate Republican support. Um, because child care is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I feel like it's worth pointing out also the amount of brain power that is uh, like sucked up by being in that situation where you know that you're trans and you're not able to come out. Like mm -hmm. that drains so much of your battery that the nor the normal amount of it's hard to care about things because your job is difficult and your kids or whatever. Um, like it's just, 
I can understand it being even more difficult for some folks like to care at all. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks the life out of you. Yeah, no kidding. I'm not even trans and I yeah, I I am, you know, I'm very sympathetic because you know I have a trans sibling and my uh fiance is actually non-binary and so like we're and she's a teacher too, so we're going through this as well. Um you know, it's scary. It's very very scary. Um so I guess I'm curious like uh, for you, what personal challenges have you had uh, dealing with like Ohio and uh, everything going on with their legislation against trans people? Um, the legislation so far hasn't affected me personally too much just because it's mostly been against kids, though there was that scary period where um, DeWine um, was trying to put out those new administrative rules, which could have made it so we would lose access to our hormones. And my body doesn't produce hormones naturally anymore because I had bottom surgery. So I need them to live. Um, but uh, on a less legislative level, um, my business died when I came out. I'm a real estate, uh, b- 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 I cannot talk. I'm a real estate photographer. And I used to be, before I came out, um, I was pretty slammed all the time. I was making about, I was like, I was making about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year doing it. And when I came out, it just went, just gone overnight um, to the point where I had to run a GoFundMe just to afford my bills for a couple months. So, um, and I haven't really been able to rebuild it since. I have I have a kind of a loyal little client base, but I'm only making about eighteen thousand dollars a year now. So, um, I've been job hunting for two and a half years. I've sent out over two thousand resumes, and it's fucking rough out there for trans people. So. Um, it sucks. Are you considering relocation? Maybe. I mean, I have my kid, and while I'm a shitty parent, um, I don't want to be too far. So I'm kind of thinking if I move, move, I might move to Columbus. But um, I've been applying to some Ohio based remote careers. So. Um, so we'll just see. But I ideally would love to live in the Pacific Northwest. That's my goal. Um, yeah, true. Because it's fucking amazing there. But, you know, I can't even think about moving until I have some income. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, income's a big issue all the way around. Um, yeah, especially since my Facebook and Instagram just got demonetized because um, I didn't know that. Uh, you can't talk about being a politician on there, so I no longer can post anything about my political uh, career so I can get monetized again. I think that's because of the law that passed in Canada, because Facebook was not like adequately um, paying news sites who were posting their content on Facebook. So now it's just like any posts with a link to something political in Canada is restricted, which that's annoying. Yeah, no, it's definitely annoying. I just, I'm like, that's the only reason I can imagine why your content was demonetized that way. It's, they say that anybody <coughs> that is a Gesundheit, Thank you, anybody sorry. that is a um, running for office or actually in office um, can't have, can't be monetized uh, due to just like election finance laws. So, huh. but I'm no longer, a, um, no longer a uh, candidate, obviously. So I actually had to talk to Instagram support yesterday, and they said it'll be a few months, and it'll eventually mm-hmm. scroll off, and I'll be monetized again. But I'm like, great, thank you. Cool. Okay. So, what was the uh, process like? You know, uh, becoming a politician sounds sounds like a big undertaking. <laughs> it's lonely um, because when you're just trying to collect signatures, no one wants to give you the time of day. Um, and being trans in a red area, I couldn't exactly go door to door knocking. Um, I did in my own little neighborhood here, but so I built up my signatures just from, um, through social media, um, meeting people. And I had a few, a couple of wonderful people that actually circulated some petitions uh, for me. And so about a third of my signatures, uh, came from that, um, was nice but it's lonely like i i tried to get a hold of the stark county democrats but they would you know like can you guys help with like a signing party or something like that nothing so yeah 
um, even the state Democrats, like I tried reaching out to them too, um, using connections to get the phone numbers of the um, of the people in charge. And even then I couldn't get it through until the disqualification and everybody was knocking at my door. So. Well, there you go. That's yeah. one way to get attention, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it certainly was. It certainly was. Well, um, I'm a little curious. Have you had any interactions, sorry, interactions with uh, any of the other candidates who were affected by this law? Because I know that like they had their cases dropped, but I was wondering if you've talked to any of them. Yeah, we've become um, acquaintances. Um, so um, I chat with both of them here and there because uh, we are all kind of thrown into the same boat. Um, and I'm trying to work with Ohio legislation to create a to either alter law or something to to kind of help them because they're going to have to uh, sue the state if they get elected in order to hold office. But um, I want to try to find a way to edit the law to because there's already an, an exclusion in the law for if you change your name through marriage, then it doesn't apply to you. So there's already a pretty major exclusion there. Um, the most common yeah. one, you might say. Yeah, exactly. So I'm hoping to see one added where if revealing your former name puts you at risk for one way or another. So that could go for victims of domestic abuse, people in witness protection, who knows, trans people. Because um, we... We wouldn't get it passed if we ran it uh, around trans people, obviously, because Republicans suck. But um, but I haven't really heard much on that. So it, pretty much everything is just a hurry up and wait thing. And then, excuse me, maybe you'll hear back from somebody, but probably not. So but that's so frustrating. It is. Well, what are your future plans? I'm curious. With like, are you gonna? Well, so because the DNC there in Ohio only wants to work with people who've already worked with them before, that says great things about the future of the party. Mm -hmm. um, uh, are you considering like volunteering for other campaigns or running for, like you said earlier, like school board is obviously lower down, but since you, you aimed a little high and you weren't able to achieve that goal, are you still thinking about being involved or are you just like, I need to pay my bills right now? Well, right now I just need to pay my bills. Sure. But, um, I... If I ran again, I probably would run for another office like House or Senate, uh, because technically I did make it. I had the signatures to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it was just this random law that just kind of tossed me aside. But um, I, don't, I don't know if I'll run again or not. It's my, The future is so uncertain right now, especially, well, as you know, with um, Project 2025 and Agenda 47, if the Republicans take control in November, you know, we're looking at concentration camps. We're, I, we're not going to be able to run for office. So mm. um, we'll be second-class citizens instantly, as if we are what well, we already are. But it's going to be even worse. So um, I have to educate myself about Agenda 47. That's Trump's one. Um, okay, cool. It's like his personal version of Project 2025. Okay. But both of them um, talk specifically about uh, eradicating trans people, So, which is fun. It's so fun to wake up every day, as you know, not knowing if you're going to have the same rights that you had the day before. So, yeah, yeah. I, I live in Kansas for comparative oh. reference. So we just passed a bathroom bill that inadvertently also retroactively revoked every single gender marker change. Mm. Uh, it's not like they're going to take my birth certificate from me, but if I needed a new one and when I get my driver's license renewed, it will be revoked like the, it'll be reverted back. So uh, despite ex post facto, I thought that this was whatever. Anyway, um. And yeah, like they're coming after trans youth hormones again. Um, like they did pass the bathroom bill, so I can't reliably safely use public restrooms. Not that I was keen on it before, but now there's but a still, threat of arrest. You know, it's, yeah. like, it's an elevated risk for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's it's a really tough. I guess I'm curious, you know, for you to speak on that. Like, how has this affected you personally in terms of like, you know, being targeted for being trans and boxed out like, what kind of impact has that had on you in the midst of all this other stuff? Like your business has been suffering for longer than you've been running for office, I assume. Yeah. Um, everywhere I go, um, like I'll walk into Starbucks and there's a bunch of old white guys in there and, you know, they stop talking and stare. Um, mm -hmm. I've had people stop their cars, run on their windows and stare. I've had people yell at me, um, mock me publicly. I've had people come into my social media, call me a pedophile. Um, 
you know, which we all get that, but. And that doesn't get better when you become higher profile. Like no. I assume that it's escalated somewhat since I, you're more recognizable. Yeah, I, I had to lock down my um, comments on my Facebook and Instagram uh, for a couple months after mm-hmm. um, after I was disqualified just to cut down on that shit. But so what are you going to say, Alec? I was going to say I get called that just for defending trans people. So mm-hmm. I can't even imagine actually being one. It's just insane. You know, I... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. I just, I, I feel so hard for it because, you know, I just get a taste, just a taste of it, you know, and God, this, the, the absolute state of it is just tragic right now. Um, and hopefully what I'm hoping is that this is just like the last stand of a dying party. I and think it is. Yeah. That's, that's like the, the kind of light in the dark right now is that mm-hmm. they got nothing else. Uh, no. how, I mean, do you feel similarly about that? Yeah, I mean, I've I've been saying that the next five years will be a shit show, and then after that, I think things will start picking up. But I actually have decently high hopes for um, for November, just because the Republicans have just doubled down way too much in stuff that isn't popular, and we're starting to see things like in Florida uh, starting to to fail. Um, and you know, when you go after women uh, or anybody with a uterus. That's 51% of the population. That's just stupid. And um, I think that a lot of Republicans are going to get voted out. And I really think that I'm, I think Ohio might actually start to flip purple on the government level because we already are purple. We're actually, if you look at the, the stats, there are more registered Democrats in Ohio than there are registered Republicans. But the problem is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there's the gerrymandering, which is beyond horrible, which yeah. they're working on. To my district was like, if you zoom in, there's individual houses cut out of it. And the current rep, um, Reggie Stoltzfus, there's like the district goes along the highway to kind of get to his house and cut it out so he can be in the district. And it's embarrassing. It <laughs> really is. Deeply embarrassing. It I'm going to really make all is. the rules. I win. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's more registered Democrats than Republicans. But the problem is people don't show up and vote. So, True. and I'm guilty of that too. In the past, I didn't vote before, but now I'm just like, just, just get out there and just do it. On that note, do you think, like, what are your thoughts now as someone who used to be a really apathetic voter and now you're obviously very motivated? Like, do you think that there's any kind of tacts we should be using to reach the kind of non-voter that you used to be? Like, obviously, you know, so much of this is reliant on interpersonal relationships and like knowing someone who's directly affected. Um, do you think that there's any kind of argumentation or persuasive direction that we can take to try to galvanize those people? I mean, I guess you were running on that platform of childcare. So maybe we just need to continue targeting those kind of broader appeal things. Yeah. Things that people actually care about, like, I, I, I don't think a lot of people actually pay attention to politics and or anything like Republicans just vote Republican because they vote Republican mm-hmm. um, and they're not paying attention to what's actually going on. Like the fact that the Ohio House just had its least productive year since the 1950s, the federal house had the least productive year ever. Um, and, but they're not necessarily paying attention. They just, we just go out and they vote the way that they always have. Um so yeah, putting out calls to action to actually have things that they care about. Um, like, there's so much disinformation coming from the other side that it's hard to reach people, honestly. And the algorithms work so strongly against us. Like, as you know, being trans um, on the internet, anything you post just dies mm-hmm. um, without a whole lot of help or without money. Um, but like having having project 2025 dissected and find things that affect you know different different groups of people you know even cisset white guys um if they're atheist or not christian um if we're looking at a theocracy they're going to lose their rights too. So um, the the way that this is looking is the only people that are going to be um, full on citizens are going to be cishet white male Christians. Everybody else is just going to be, you know, cattle for the slaughter. So, 
Well, and it affects us too, because I was on testosterone replacement therapy for a while. Mm -hmm. And so if I can't get access to that as easily, if they make me jump through all these extra hurdles, all it took for me was a phone call, an appointment and a lab draw. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I had my tea. That's it. And, and if it, if it takes anything more than that for other people, that's called discrimination. And, and, and eventually that's point one. And point two is they're going to come for me too. They're going to say, no, 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 you can't get on TRT because that's unnatural or whatever. You know, it's against God's will. And mm -hmm. now we're a, a Christian theocracy. So no, thanks. Um, we, we don't like science and medicine actually. Uh, goodbye. So, <laughs> you know, it, 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 that's the way it is. And that's the way that they want it. So we need to take away Vi Viagra because that's yeah. gender affirming care. Yep. You know, if they're going to ban it, ban it. It's God's will that you can't get it up. I'm so sorry. Yeah, exactly. You can never have sex again. Well, you can. You just got to get more creative. Read the book, F Trans Women. It's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Plug for a book I've never read. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Um, here's a question for you. So let's, I, I guess I'm just curious about like your future. Uh, have you, I don't think you've talked yet about you know, like your future plans, any kind of aspirations that you have, if you continue, if you plan to continue politics, uh, anything in that regard? It's all up in the air. My, my first goal is to get a job. So I have some income. Right. Um, Mention that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay in the country or flee the country. Um, I don't know if I can stay in Ohio or flee Ohio. And so I'm trying not to plan too far ahead because it's kind of impossible. So I'm kind of going a step at a time. Would I run for office again? Maybe. Would it be in Ohio? I don't know. Um, and, but I'm trying to make impacts other ways, at least, you know, I have my little podcast that I wish it was bigger than a little podcast, but, um, but kind of just, you know, working my way in, um, and, you know, I've been applying for roles at, I just got turned down for a role at Red Wine and Blue. Um, I made it to the end of the interviews, but they had someone's just a little bit better. So, um, but um, I did Quality Ohio, stuff like that, where places I can try to make a difference somehow. Absolutely. All right. For my part, I just want to say, like, I have also been questioning, like, am I going to move? Like, where am I going to move to? Um, you know, climate change as well as, as like another yeah. consideration for me. Um, like I live in Kansas and I love being from here, but like it's going to get hotter and hotter and I have a medical overheating problem and I can't legally use bathrooms in public. So like I kind of have what to. Do do? And like my personal opinion is that, you know, it's not just the United States. We're seeing this increasing dramatic everywhere. rhetoric everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. Like worldwide. Worldwide, like, you know, over in Europe, it's it's kicking up, like even in Germany, you have increasing anti-trans um, like sentiment. And like even in Canada, I've seen Canada's getting like, bad fast. Yeah. Homophobic and transphobic hate crimes in British Columbia, which everybody's like, oh, that's where you need to move. Mm -hmm. Come to Vancouver. And it's like, OK, well, it's like not necessarily better there in yeah. that regard. So my personal opinion is I would rather live in like Oregon or Washington and have a gun. Like, mm -hmm. and a community of a lot of other trans people around me. Um, like, it's so isolated. I, and there yeah. are there are places in, in Kansas and in the Midwest, and I'm sure in Ohio, that are, like, progressive cities tend to be that way. They cluster around a little bit. But, like, it feels so bad to be, like, an island in the midst of, like, you step one foot outside of your little progressive bubble, and suddenly you're coming in contact with people with thick southern accents, and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, no. Um, so that's just for my, my two cents for anybody watching this, who's like going through these same motions of consideration. Like what is the plan? Like sanctuary states, or I guess safe haven states, whatever the preferred nomenclature is, um, like Minnesota and, uh, I think Oregon and Washington, both maybe California, like for trans safety, those are going to mm -hmm. be the places and finding out where other trans people live and like making a point to establish community and make friends and yeah. make allies and get to know your neighbors and everything. Uh, you might even find some people you end up changing their mind on the way because getting to know your neighbors might involve getting to know some like people who normally might not, might, might be pretty indifferent to trans people. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, making those connections is going to be really important, I think, for our survival going forward. So like you said, it was so isolating going through that political process. It almost seems like in order to build community that's like objectively not the way to go because yeah. just the process of getting in there is so isolating 
No, I mean, Pacific Northwest is where, if I stay in the States, it's where I'd want to go. Um, mm. Or Norway, um, Sweden, yeah. Norway. Um, those are good places for us. But And they'll give you health care because you've already had bottom surgery. <laughs> like, exactly. They're, they're going to be like, oh, you need the hormones. We don't need to uh, go through the whole National Health Service scrutinization process. So. I mean, ideally, I'd move to Iceland, but uh, they're smart. They don't allow Americans to <laughs> um, expatriate there unless you're independently wealthy. So, okay. but like, I can't blame them. You know, that's that's a small island. You, they don't need more Americans. <laughs> totally Certainly fair. not. I don't think anybody needs more Americans. No. <laughs> But anyway, um, we are closing out on an hour here. What I do want to, I, I do want to reach out to chat real quick. If you guys have any questions at all for uh, the lovely Vanessa Joy here, please feel free to throw them into the chat, and then I'll go ahead and read them out. Um, one more question from me: um, How do you feel that, like the average person, like somebody watching right now, uh, can help with this situation on their own? Like, what's something that they can do, like now or tomorrow, or maybe like within the coming weeks? Um, to, you know, help with the situation and push back against all this rampant transphobia on either a, you know, local, state, or even national level. Share our content and don't talk over us. Um, it's because when we when we put out content, the algorithms automatically suppress it on, on all the platforms. But if they're starting to be shared by cis people, that really brings out our reach. It shows that you support us, um, support what we have to say. Yeah, but also, as I said, don't talk over us. Um, trans rights are perfectly fine to be talked about by allies, but if there's a trans person in the room, the trans person should be the first person talking about it. Um, and that goes for any demographic, you know. Um, but yeah, just elevate our voices because that's what we need. You don't have to spend money um, unless you send my Patreon for my uh, podcast money, then I don't complain about that. But um yeah, you don't have to spend money, just share. That's how you be an ally is to uh, step up and because you will put yourself at risk by supporting us. You will get hate. You will have people try to come after you too. You will get the same death threats that we will, but that we do. Um, but doing so, it's you're showing your humanity and that you're living beyond a bubble. So. All right. Excellent. Um, anything to add, Alexander? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, in these situations where you have the opportunity to contact legislators, like the more people do that, the better. I know that that's something that you galvanize people toward, Alec, is just like, hey, let me point you here. Here's the phone number. Call them. Do it now. Here's a script. Try, uh, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've used ResistBot before to like automatically send faxes and emails. Um, through if you don't know the numbers, if you don't want to like take the time to research every independent person's phone number, but there's all kinds of different stuff that you could get involved with in that regard. You can also like volunteer for campaigns to phone bank. Um, Progressive Victory is a like a sort of nonprofit that I'm associated with that like a ton of Destiny fans for some reason <laughs> are involved with it and they phone bank. Um, and we've successfully changed things like in Wisconsin, I think it was the Supreme Court, there was an issue of like, who's going to get appointed? And we helped get the Democratic woman appointed to protect abortion rights there. Um, yeah, so like any, as much as I am now kind of growing away from the idea of electoralism, that is still the system we live in. And so that's like one of the areas that you can make the strongest impact as well as continuing to uh, protest and be mindful of community health and awareness. Like, you know, be wearing a mask in public, like th little things that you can help ripple out mm -hmm. and change things for the better. So just being mindful of, you know, what are some areas that you could be more helpful? Do you have enough money to contribute to a GoFundMe of someone who's trying yeah. to escape? Do you have a couch that someone could crash on as they're traveling to a place that's, that's safer? Yeah, um, another organization that I help with is rainbowpassage.org. And that is what they do. Not Rainbow Railroad, that's a different thing. Um, it's about getting people within the United States to places that are safe. So if you can donate to any of those causes, if you have any skills that you could volunteer to help get people to safer places, you know, we try to work on making places safer and also recognize that 
you know, like I don't want to stay in Kansas. Maybe you don't want to stay in Ohio because it's Fuck getting no. worse and worse. Yeah. It's Fuck not like state. we, yeah. Um, but we don't always have the option to get away. Yeah. So it's, you know, either we have to work here and make things better. Trans kids are still going to be born in Kansas and Ohio, even mm -hmm. if we leave. Um, but at the same time, recognizing that, our, you know, our physical safety can be on the line. Um, so anything you can do to help minimize mm -hmm. any of those harms. It's big. Just, it's big. Yeah. Think outside the box. Just get active and motivated in your communities really is the big thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I try to tell people to stay updated with their uh, local politics is something that mm -hmm. I'm still working on myself. Um, I started picking up the newspaper, but I just stopped doing it because I'm in such a routine. So I understand how hard it is to do that. But if you can stay involved in your local politics and go to these school board meetings and go to these um, uh, uh, city council meetings. And, you know, I went to that state meeting, the, the Ohio State. Uh, what is it called? Um the uh, board of elections, or the board mm -hmm. of elections, the school board, mm. yeah. board of education. Sorry, and I, I I spoke there, you know, and that and that can make a huge impact, guys. Especially if you're cis, all right. Especially yes. if you're a, a cis a cis man, of course. Cis woman doesn't matter. Like cis allies are just so important. Um, so it, it, optically, it just it helps so much. So if you guys can get out there, anything that you can do to help. Um, I'm sure it would be greatly appreciated by the trans community at large, and uh, certainly by people like Vanessa Joy, who was directly impacted by archaic laws against that were uh, apparently specifically uh, crafted against trans people, or at least used against they them. They weren't. They're used against us. They were not crafted against us. It almost so. seems yeah. like it was, though. It feels like it, but, you know, trans people weren't on the radar back in the 1850. True. So, um, but the, the law was designed to keep people um from changing their names and running under for nefarious purposes um but nowadays changing your name is not easy you have to go through the courts you have to go through background checks all kinds of stuff so really the law at this point isn't really necessary it's designed to protect creditors um that's why it's there because money yep that's another thing that people should be uh maybe put on their radar is like there are still like for example anti-sodomy laws in various places and we think oh whatever Nobody enforces those anymore. Well, guess what? If they're on the books, all it takes is someone being really sour mm -hmm. and deciding to like enforce those laws. Like this law that rarely gets enforced that took you off the ballot, like it can still be weaponized, even yeah. if we think, oh, it's archaic and nobody cares. Most people didn't even know about this law. Like the Democratic Party themselves didn't even know about this law. Mm -hmm. It's not on the form to put your previous name. So there was reasonably no way for anybody to know. And yet it still has impacted Ohio politics by yeah. just depriving this county of having a Democrat running. Of course, what was the um, the new person running um, his name? His uh, Dormus Redvine. Dormus Redvine. Okay, so there yeah. is a write-in candidate. So mm -hmm. if you live in Stark County, like support that guy. But yeah, um, pay attention to those laws because just because they're not being enforced doesn't mean that they're not enforceable. Yeah. And don't go to Chick-fil-A. No. <laughs> no, I stopped going there. Fuck that place. They're Bojangles even, is where it's at. Bojangles is so good. Ooh. Their chicken sandwiches ain't even that good. Like, not, yeah, not, yeah. it's not worth, like, go to KFC or something. Go anywhere else. Like, Wendy's not, has a good chicken sandwich. Yeah. So, seriously. All right. Well, I think this was a great conversation. Is there uh, anything else you guys li would like to add before you uh, give your closing statements and shout yourselves out? Just Unless there's something in chat. Follow Aaron Reed if you're curious on trans True. news. Follow Aaron Reed. Um, e R I N R E E D. And if you support anybody uh, financially, send her five bucks a month because um, she does so much good for our community. Um, mm -hmm. I got to talk with her and Zoe Zephyr on the phone, and I totally fangirled when I did that. So, um, but yeah, just support, support uh, people that need support. Absolutely. Uh, Alexander, you want to go ahead and close out and then I'll. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I just, I hope that more people care about these issues, like more and more involvement I'm hoping for. Um, the more we can spread our political message, the more awareness we have. So um, yeah, I, I guess unless there's any commentary or questions from chat, then that's mostly I, it for me. Subscribe to Luxander. <laughs> subscribe to Luxander. Subscribe to uh, the... Venestradio or, or Transcending Humanity. Um, that's the podcast. I want to add one thing to follow up on what Alexander said. Um, 
they're starting with the trans community, but they're not going to end with us. Mm -hmm. We're the test group. The Nazis did the exact same thing. We are in the middle of a genocide. I don't use that word lightly. We are in the middle of a genocide. Uh, Look up the 10 stages of genocide. You'll see we're in six and seven right now. Um, And eight and nine are the ones where they start killing us. But they're not going to stop with us um, at all. We're a test group because we're small. So unless they're stopped now, they're going to go for, they're going to keep going with more and more groups. So. And I just want to point out, uh, I want to give a, sh- a small shout out to uh, Neko Suris. Um, I don't know them personally or him personally because um, I don't know. I just have never interacted with him, but I watch his videos all the time. And he just did a great video about which like there's only one out of all of the stages of the genocide that we have not hit yet like they're it's already the denying denial it. one. Oh, that they're, guess they are already in the yeah, yeah i mean they're doing everything short of actually outwardly putting trans people in camps mm-hmm. like we are in the midst of a genocide guys and if you don't believe that we are i don't know what to tell you yeah. you know we're, we're certainly in the middle of something so even if you think it's not a genocide i would encourage you to be vigilant you know they're not going to stop at trans people just like vanessa said um they'll take away my testosterone they'll take away your medications next they'll they'll do all kinds of things um so uh, thank you very much vanessa for all your insight on this and Alexander, you as well you guys have been so wonderful today and it was great having you um, it was nice to meet you both yeah, it was, it was great talking to you guys. Um, thanks so much for coming on today. Just once again, um, I'm bad at closing things out, but I am. Too. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And Alexander, uh, I don't know if you're live or not, but if you are, I hope you, the rest of you're not okay. I no, I say, didn't even know that this was going to be live. I knew we were going to record. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I should have okay. specified that. I should have specified that. It's all um, good. But anyway, thank you guys so much again for being here. I hope you have a, a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. You too. Good luck on stream. Thank you. Take care, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload. If you uh, enjoy my content, you enjoy what I do, I really appreciate any financial help that I can get. Go to youtube.com slash TTV slash join. You got some awesome benefits such as seeing early videos, awesome emotes that you can use in the comments of YouTube videos, and a sweet badge next to your name. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'd really appreciate if you join. It is cheaper than the cost of a blowjob from your mom. So with all that being said, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.